tackle set. Here is Hagan ready for third down. Shotgun snap to lock. He's going to find his man. That's Tavon Austin. Good job, and finally, Tavon down he Austin. goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. A quick throw outside by Locke. And the Broncos are going to be looking at a first and goal as he's out of bounds at the three-yard line. They'll try and punch it in. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Well, they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Corey And they'll have the football deep in their own territory as he's brought down at the five. CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about it. he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Christian McCaffrey, the complete package. He's got the power in the hand the agility and he certainly also has the speed as evidenced there and first and foremost this is all about vision he can see the play developing right in front of him and once he's past the line of scrimmage and got a full head of steam behind him he's just going to keep right on going he's going to look deep for more into a double team and it's intercepted picked off inside the five and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back second interception for him now here in this first half and you got to think he's a rookie Charles how much does confidence start to become a factor I think that's a great question because that's what they're going to check on when he gets to the sidelines the coach is going to check on his teammates going to check on it because when you haven't done it before it's not something that's part of you you got to see how you're going to react let's see how he bounces back yeah because two interceptions for him in college and a half i mean that just didn't happen so they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three lock gonna hand it off here to gordon they find some open field here and he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field that's a good chunk of yardage it's going to be canceled out and we always talk about hidden yardage in a game that's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And he's dropped just shy of the 25 at the 24. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. And the Broncos first down. From the gun, it's Locke. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. They run it here with Gordon. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. It's a gain of four. And it's third down. Throwing his lock on third down. That's complete, Okue Bunam. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. We're scoreless after one. first down and he'll get it down here to the 43 give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down that's a really good gain right there they pick up five yards halfway to a first down the only problem now in the huddle everyone's going to want to touch the football be a lot of chattering now because 
They've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by the rookie Jeremy Chin. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Now second and seven from the 23. They go play action with Eason. Eluding the pressure right. Winds up and lets it go for Samuel. Scramble drill there, partner. Some teams have some pretty good rules for it. Others are just saying, make sure you work your way back into the sight lines of your quarterback, even if you take the play deep. And that's what they attempted to do on that one, unable to connect. Eason gets hit, and the ball pops free. It's picked up by the Broncos. And this is going to be brought back for a Denver touchdown. So the big fella gets on the scoreboard with a return for a touchdown. Good thing he didn't have to go too far, though. You know the trainers were very happy about that. Imagine having to go get him in the end zone, escort him to the bench, and give him the oxygen. They were loving the fact that he got in without having to run very far. Taken in the end zone. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And in just about every game we see, partner, what do we do when we look at the stat sheet? We go right to the turnover differential. Without a doubt, because when we see that, that pretty much tells the tale of the game. And I know there's still plenty of time to go, but you've got to take care of the football in order to win it. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the gun is Eason. And a little floater there, but it'll wind up incomplete, falling to the ground. Robbie Anderson, the man he was looking for, and it's third and four. Eason going to throw it out of the shotgun. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Catch number 44 of on the year. It's a first down. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. This in the red zone all the way inside Denver's 15. A big change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. This offense has been slow to get started, but that play will certainly give them a little bit of life. Maybe the late wake-up call that they've been seeking. The former Gamecock here. This is Mike Davis. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Another run, this time McCaffrey. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They lost four there, and it's third down. Well, they went back to him, but the results were similar, so I highly doubt that he'll get another opportunity here on third and long. Third and 15 here after the first and second down plays went in the wrong direction. Steps away to his left. Good work by that Bronco defense, and it leads to a fourth down. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach.
The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. To this point, the results have not been good. Two possessions, two turnovers. And that's obviously something that can't continue, but to go a little bit deeper on that one, I would think about some play calls now, not even necessarily to my best player, but to someone I can trust with the ball, try and get things settled down a little bit. Looking to throw again on second down. Lock. That'll be caught by the rookie, K.J. Hamler. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Lock now on first down. He'll let it fly for Austin. And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way home for the Broncos score. Tavon Austin, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Broncos push further out in front. I think it's fair to say there's nothing that gets a crowd to its feet quite like a big play, and that was something special there. Boy, was he moving. Extra point from McManus is good, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Fielded in the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lift your wounds at the half, and see if you can come up with a strategy to play better in the second. But there's also something to challenge in your offense right here. You know, hey, guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. Great right way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. Operating from the gun. Eason. Flush to his right. He'll get this to McCaffrey out of the backfield. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. First and ten here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Open man is Robbie Anderson. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. But so far, a little bit no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to him, and it's paying off. On first down, Jacob Eason flushed out right. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. The intended receiver there, Ian Thomas. And now it's second down. Well, when you've got a tight end who can run, you've got to give him a shot to unlock the defense. Want to see what they can get taking the big shot downfield. That one winds up incomplete. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. To throw again. Eason, he's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. Third down and 10. Eason sets to throw it. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. They'll get the first down and more in San Antonio. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 13 yards, first down, Panthers. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he's got it. And he's brought down. And now we'll get a late timeout. 
as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. And goal to go. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. On the ground, McCaffrey. And he is in. Touchdown, Carolina. Christian McCaffrey in the final seconds of the first half. And the Panthers are able to get this back within a touchdown. Until that late score here in the second quarter, they only had the field goal. So that's just big to see that football get into the end zone. Yeah, when you look at the scoreboard now, nothing seems out of reach. They've been outplayed in the first half. But when the clock hits zeros as they head into the half, you know what I do as head coach? What? I tell my team to sprint to the locker room to show that we've got the momentum and show that we're right back in this game. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, Broncos with the lead, and they will be receiving this kickoff here as quarter three is underway. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Complete pass leads to second and ten from the 25. Fakes the give to Gordon. Now here's Locke to throw. Now Locke, he lost the football. It's out. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And he takes it into the end zone. It's a fumble recovery and a touchdown for the Panthers. So a big turn of events there. This defense makes the play. They return it for the score, and now they have the lead. So much for ball security for the offense. Playing with a lead in the second half. They give the ball up, and all of a sudden they're behind. Big time fumble. So here's the kickoff now as they'll get it again following that fumble return for a score fielded near the back of the end zone and this will not be returned it'll come out to the 25 they're on 25 yard line the broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive and that last possession really a gut punch you seemingly had it working you were in the midst of a very strong drive then suddenly the fumble and you're watching the back of a defender's jersey as he brings it all the way in the other direction. There's not much more I can add to that. I thought you summarized it perfectly, partner. you just got to regroup and start putting another drive together. That's all you can do. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Locke working out of the gun. On the right side, this is Austin with a catch. He'll be tackled shy on the 35. Pretty shifty footwork, but didn't buy it much. And it's third down. Locke off a of play action. And Locke throws another one. It's intercepted. Picked up by Troy Pruitt, and his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. They'll try to get the running game going with McCaffrey. A little juke, and he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. A gain of three, second down. They did a really nice job there defensively. They strung the play out, didn't give him a cutback lane. On each play, you have guys what I call our BCR players. Guys are responsible for the bootleg, for the cutback, and for the reverse. They played that one perfectly. And rode him right out of bounds. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 11 yards there, first down. 
An excellent run there coming from out wide. I mean, he's considered these jet sweeps to be gadget plays or something a little bit unusual, right? But now most teams have some version of this play in their playbook. And I think it's a lot because of the receivers that are being developed nowadays. These guys look like running backs, even though they're playing out on the perimeter. Michael O.J. Moody with the tackle. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They give those two yards right back, and now they're looking at a third and ten. Third and ten. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. To throw on third down, Eason. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be spotted just shy of midfield. A 59-yard attempt. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Yeah, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Locke going to get this out quickly. Sutton with it. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 15 yards on the play. First down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving. Scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. That's going to be caught by Judy. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Well, you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those, but the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. Not in a uh, party anymore. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And he is finally going to be brought down, but not before he gets it to the Panthers' 15. Well, they only needed a small gain on third down. They end up getting over 30 yards. With that last effort, he topples the 5,000-yard mark for his career. And that doesn't place you among the absolute greats that have ever played the game, but it's a significant achievement and a very, very solid career. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. And what they tell their defensive linemen is yep. play the run on your way to the quarterback. If someone shows, go get him. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah, whatever. Oh, oh, go get him, go get him. Oh my God. But he won't fumble that. <laughs> Come on. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Broncos 
trailing, but they do have possession of the football as we begin quarter number four. They come up on a first and goal and most likely four down territory as they need a touchdown and a PAT for the lead. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. He shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety. And he's going to be dropped. Back at the 15-yard line. So that time, Charles, a quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. And this came from the interior of the defensive line, and these guys, they're normally anchors of that spot, and they don't often get clear shots at the quarterback. But in this case, he got past the center and the guard in no time and got there to make the play. Oh, good throw. And he's unable to haul it in. So you threw that right where I was supposed to be. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. That's a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. Just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time. To I think that's play. the hard thing about this uh, film league in year one. After splitting the uprights, McMahon is ridiculous. Fields it in the middle of the yeah. end zone. But what I what I've been noticing is like the the, the teams that's good, they only good because it's a Sam League. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. I guess the good news as they start this drive is that they, they still do have the lead, Charles. If their defense hadn't been able to hold them to a field goal on the Oh, I shouldn't have juked. Now it's about preserving that very small lead. It is preserving. I should not have juked. Because if you're a starter on that side of the ball, I certainly hope you didn't loosen up your shoulder pads or start to cut the tape off. Because if you did, you did it way too soon. They've got to go back out there with renewed vigor, for lack of a better term, and also a good plan. Chill <laughs> loud, dude. They'll be taken down, but now it gets into enemy territory. Uh -huh. The Panthers have the first. It's a gain of 12. You wallet. This might be the best of the bunch. A first down carry for Davis. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Defensively, a solid exactly. response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have to lead this late in the game, above all, Stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Oh, come on. He's out of bounds. Almost gets to the team. A big play on the catch and run, covering mm. 34 yards. When they needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. On first down, this is McCaffrey. They showed some tough running, but they'll drop him at the five-yard line. They'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Brings up second and four. Get in there, Get in there. <laughs> Oh my god. Panthers are able to grow their lead. Brandon, would you say they went from agony to elation in just a few quick seconds? Running a full two. There is absolutely no way that they drew it up and said this is the way it's supposed to be done. It just happened. But the end will just Good job, big boy. That was a that was a big touchdown. Takes this about five yards deep. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. At their own 20 yard line. The 
Broncos <laughs> onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And they can second. win games if you go field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. A little bit of a big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Score. I just hate they don't react. I knew you were going there. They don't react like they did on the on the on the floor, man. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and ten. Back to throw. Lock. This is Hamler on the receiving end. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25 yard line. Bro, I went cover six that time and you killed me. What is offensive line at on Pan? Oh, he's open for a touchdown. And this time he's got the hook up. It's complete. What is offensive line at on paying so much money for? Goodness. Defensive line, rather. Into the red zone, it's lock. Dance into his left. In his career, please. Oh. Getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. He was looking for Albert O. Albert Okue Bunam was the target there, and it's third and short. Lock to throw. Oh my god. Who's over there? Oh, was that my man? Here we go now as we get set for a big two point conversion. And it's caught. And he's roughing the passer. But there is a flag. Hold him. Good. And this is in the area of holding. Umpire through the flag usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. To throw his lock. And he can't get up for <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't go down. Fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell you when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. You know I ain't finna run this ball up, he done made me fumble right. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Good game, brother. He's had some big runs in this game. Not there, though. But I'm going to right there. He's had some nice runs in the game. And how many times have we He's trying to get on that duty. Running back, get stopped, yet turn it into something big on a later carry. I'd stay with him. So this one is over. A victory for Carolina. And they were really helped by their defense, forcing three turnovers. I think what we saw in this one today's defense. And what I mean by that is in the old days, pitching shutouts was big time. That was paramount. But the big thing was holding people down, holding down their yardage, right? Don't let them throw the ball through the air and gain a lot of... Uh, now, it's about taking where the ball you gonna be at? taking away possessions, getting the ball back for their offense. They had three takeaways in this one, and it led them to victory.
So for Carolina, their very slim playoff hopes remain as they move to six and seven on the year. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the Green Bay Packers. Meanwhile, for the Broncos, the loss here is their tenth of the season. Yep. And they will get the home next week as they will take on the Buffalo Bills.